guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here we're gonna be talking about terrifier 3 in this video here today but we'll be talking about beetlejuice beetlejuice we'll be talking about this new hayden pantier horror movie and we'll round it out by talking about final destination 6 so just to start off here with terrifier 3 we got a new look at terrifier 3 here today courtesy of bloody disgusting now if you look at this photo art is just a harmless critter he just wants to hand out dolls to little kids according to what you see here on your screen. So there's no harm being done in this movie. It's a nice photo that I'm sure is going to lead to some source of trauma for these children. Especially the girl that's receiving this doll. Now there's a second cut of the trailer online called the nice cut as well. Shout out to UK for sending this to me because I didn't even think to acknowledge the fact that the first trailer was called the naughty cut. So it's not shocking that there's a version out there called the nice cut. What I've gathered from watching it is that it's the same but it does include a few new shots that the naughty cut doesn't. And when I say it's the same I mean it's just the same general premise. But there's a few different new glimpses of art mostly. We still have the same general idea. Sienna is still talking about digging up this weapon, having to go back to the Terrifier. You see all the same similar beats for the most part. And shout out to everyone reminding me of what that sword was featured in Terrifier 2. Because I was spacing out on that weapon comment that they made. Talking about they have to go back and dig it up. I'm like, what are you talking about? I, remember, I don't remember a sequence of her burying that sword, but I guess... That's what they could be digging up is the sword that she used to fight Art the Clown during the finale of T2. So I guess she did bury it, although I don't recall a burial scene occurring. That might be something that happened in between the five year jump that happened from T2 to T3. But you guys can let me know what you think about that down in the comment section below. What did you think of this new image from Terrifier 3? Have you bought your Terrifier 3 tickets yet? If you haven't, go out and get them. I will try my best to have a review up right after fantastic fest no promises if not maybe the week prior to the film being out now let's talk about beetlejuice so beetlejuice beetlejuice and beetlejuice 3 we're going to talk about that beetlejuice beetlejuice is on track to make over 100 million during its opening weekend now that's good especially for a film sequel coming out so many decades later but you need to keep this in mind when we do this when we as moviegoers do this that's why Hollywood doubles down on sequels and reboots, because the general public often does show that they are going to show up for sequels and reboots. I'm aware a lot of us want new content to shine and for new ideas to be born. However, this is still a business. They're in the business of making money. You're in the business of being entertained by their prospects of making money. What's often neglected is that showing up this hard for a sequel that's coming three decades or so later is doing nothing but sending a message to Hollywood that even more popular old films can be dug up and get a sequel that could be worthwhile. Top Gun Maverick and even the Top Gun 3 we're about to get is the most popular prospect I can even think of right now. Tim Burton was asked about a potential third Beetlejuice and gave this comment to The Hollywood Reporter. He said, well, if the same time frame goes on, I'll be about 100, so maybe. I doubt it. Now, he has that's a bit of a joking comment, but let's be real. If the film is making that much opening weekend depending on what the budget was, they're not going to wait that long to do Beetlejuice 3. They're going to give us Beetlejuice 3. Now, if Tim Burton isn't down to direct Beetlejuice 3, the rights holders will just find a new director and they'll try their best to convince whoever they want to return to return. Whoever, whoever makes it out of Beetlejuice Alive, whether that be Jenna, whether that be Winona, whether that be Michael Keaton himself, uh, whoever makes it out of Beetlejuice 2 and can make it into the third film, if Tim Burton isn't down to direct, They'll just find someone else because an opening weekend like that, Beetlejuice 3 should be a no-brainer for them. Again, it's all about making money to them, and we want to be entertained, but again, it's still a business. Now we're going to talk about this report with Hayden Pantier's new horror film. According to Deadline, Hayden Pantier will star in A Breed Apart, which is being billed as a reimagining of the Wes Craven produced and Nicholas Ma Mastandria directed The Breed. The upcoming movie is more accurately a sequel of sorts to the breed and is set after the events of the first film. The new picture originally bore the same name, but the title has now been tweaked. The plot of a of a breed apart sees a pack of dogs escape during the making of a fictional The Breed 2 movie during filming on a remote island. So it has some meta aspect to it. it says years later, a group of YouTubers are drawn to the islands to try and find the canines in a project they hope goes viral and which is the brainchild of influencer Vince Venture, who was played by Bragg. The reality is they is that they face a fight for survival, and each of the influencers must use their unique skills to stay alive. 
And I have so many questions about this because for one, I didn't think that this film had a cult following at all. Not in the way I've seen certain articles make it out to be. I didn't think this film had a cult following. I haven't even seen The Breed since about 2009, maybe even a little bit longer than that. It's not a stellar film by any means from what I recall. Just a nostalgic horror film that I'll be revisiting soon if we we're getting a sequel to it. Are you guys a fan of The Breed? Let me know down below. I genuinely have not watched The Breed in over 15 years it has to be at least over 15 years if not 15 at least over 10 i only watched it a couple times it was fun it was dumb <laughs> i don't mind revisiting it like i said i don't recall that being a stellar movie so i don't really have too many high hopes for the sequel but i will be watching obviously for hayden pan year now the last thing we're going to talk about here is going to be final destination 6 final destination 6 aka final destination bloodlines is going to be introducing a guidebook of sorts allegedly this book has been created and updated for several decades since that tower collapse premonition that we know is going to be featured in the movie who the guidebook belongs to is something many of you studying the film front and back you already have that answer to you already know who it belongs to however that person did have help making the book this guidebook will also reference a previous premonition event maybe a couple others as for some other cool tidbits of, about Final Destination 6, the tattoo parlor sequence that producer Greg Perry has hyped up is going to include some callbacks to a kill to or a callback to a kill from Final Destination 2. How it calls back to that kill in Final Destination 2, I won't say, but you'll see what I mean when it drops. And if you're someone who wears piercings, just more tidbits about that Final Destination tattoo parlor scene. Maybe don't wear any piercings while watching this movie because I hear a piercing is involved with this tattoo parlor moment, specifically a nose piercing. So if you don't want to have any type of wincing moments that are heightened in any sort of capacity and you have piercings, just don't wear them. Now, I have heard Kelly Clarkson's What Doesn't Kill You Makes You Stronger is a song featured in the soundtrack. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> Sounds like it's going to be a, a pretty hilarious song to include. So I would say maybe don't include that song if you in the official release. I don't want to hear that song. But again, it just sounds like it could, it could make the sequence cartoony and take away the tension. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notification and miss a video. In the description, I have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.